Today we got a reaction video on the real history of slavery. Southern Negro. Yes. Make sure y'all subscribe to CJ Arena. Yeah, make sure y'all subscribe to CJ Arena. Yeah. I've got that. You got that. Anyways, uh, yeah, guys. We're teaching the kids about some history. Uh, yeah. The history of our ancestors. I know y'all ready. She's ready now. I'm guys, ready. make sure y'all don't subscribe. Make sure y'all do subscribe below. Yeah, yeah. Dang, you going through this so fast. <laughs> you got to catch up. Anyways. <laughs> All right, guys. I know y'all ready. We're ready. Y'all ready? We're ready. Okay, you done talking. Guys, make sure y'all subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. It's to the Baby's channel and Oz channel. So, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyways, guys, let's get it. All that I know, the teachers remind your master and your missus. Been slaves all our lives. My mother was a slave. My sister was a slave. My father was a slave. They treat me nice as they could treat me. And if I want anything, I'll ask for it. I was taught it that way by my old master. These are the voices of former slaves, victims of one of America's greatest crimes against humanity. Listening to them speak and hearing their lamentations does a different level of justice than history books ever could. John Henry Folk was a storyteller and radio show host who in 1941 started doing interviews with former slaves in a project to bring awareness to racism. One former slave he interviewed was Fountain Hughes. Little did Folk realize this interview would be one of his most important. My name is Fountain Hughes. I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. My grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. My grandfather was 115 years old when he died. And now I am 101 years old. Although many slaves were kidnapped or abducted, Hughes was different. He was born of slaves, as was his father. He didn't know any other life. It's what they call, we were slaves. We belonged to people. They sell us like they sell horses and cows. And Hogs and all like that have an auction bench and they put you on, up on the bench and bid on you the same as you're bidding on the cattle, you know. The auction bench was an infamous place among slaves. Here, people would learn not only who their future masters would be, but exactly what price a person could put on another person. Sell the women, sell the men, all that. And then if they had any bad ones, they'd sell them to the nigger traders, what they call the nigger traders, and they'd ship them down south. They'd sell them down south. After leaving the auction, they would be at the whims of their new masters. Of course, when someone is considered to be a piece of property rather than a person, little is done to make them comfortable. Deplorable living conditions, tattered and worn out clothes, and sometimes a bare minimum of food were all that slaves were given. Some people didn't have no beds when they were slaves. You won't slip on the floor, pat it here and pat it there. Just like a lot of uh, wild people, we didn't, we didn't know nothing. We didn't like to look in no book. Often, the slaves were only dressed in what they showed up in, made mostly of rag and cloth. The lucky ones may have had a pair of shoes or some denim. So I didn't ever wore no shoes until I was 12 or 13 years old. Now people put on shoes on babies, you know, when they're two years, when they're month old, I'd be, I don't know, put shoes on babies, just as soon as you see them out in the street, they got shoes on. Not much attention was given to the slave's diet. More times than not, they would only have things like soups or stews made from the scraps of the master's dinner. Wouldn't trade, dug out, you know, all about that, you know. And all of them, you know, would get around that tray with spoons and just eat, sit you like mush or soup or something like that. And all of them children get around there and just eat, 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 eat. Slaves had no weekends, no holidays, no days off. Each day was filled with nothing but work and meeting the needs of the masters. Night never come, though. You have nothing to do. Time cut tobacco. If they want you to cut all night long out in the field, you cut. And if they want you to hang all night long, you hang, hang the back. It didn't matter about your tired, being tired, you're afraid to say you're tired. It wasn't a sense of duty that compelled the slaves, nor was it a love for their owners. 
A cloud of dread hovered over them, as the smallest infraction could mean a painful punishment, usually in the form of beatings. Former slave Laura Smalley described what she saw one day when another slave woman earned a whipping after her master's mistress tried to slap her and she fought back, pushing her into a chair. But I think that old woman, poor old woman, cat in the peach orchard and whipped her. And, you know, just tied her hand this way, you know, around the peach orchard tree. I remember that this is well looked like to me, I can't, and round a tree and whipped her. And well, she couldn't do nothing but just kick her feet, you know, just kick her feet. But it, it just had a clothes off down to her waist, you know. Just didn't have a plum naked, but they had a clothes down to her waist. And. And every now and then they'd whip her, you know, and then snuff the pipe out on her, you know, she snuffed pipe out on her. You know, the embers in the pipe, I'm going to see the pipe smoking. Blow them out on her? Mm -hmm. oh, Good Lord. Mm -hmm. Even though slavery was a practice in which evil was free to roam, there were still some owners who aspired to be better, treating the slaves with more dignity and decorum. Having a master who would speak with kindness, show courtesy, and treat them as humans was among the most coveted things any slave could ask for. They treat me nice as they could treat me. And they all treat me nice. All the white folks that know that they treat me nice. And if I want anything, I'll ask for it. I was taught it that way by my old master. Don't steal, don't lie. And if you want anything, ask for it. Be honest in what you get. That's what I was raised up with. Even though the masters would preach honesty, they were still not very trusting. Simply going out, even on the orders of the master, required a number of steps. Now I couldn't go from here across the street, or I couldn't go from nobody's house without I have a note or something from my master. And if I had that pass, I would really call a pass. If I had that pass, I could go wherever he sent me, and I'd have to be back, you know, you know whoever he sent me to. They, They'd give me another pass, and I'd bring that back, so it's to show how long I've been gone. With the With the passage of the Emancipation Proclamation, the slaves were free, but only by degree. They weren't truly as free as they thought. Union soldiers, who slaves once thought of as liberators, would sometimes pass through and not give a second thought to the people they helped to free. I remember when the Yankees came along and took all the good horses and took all the, sort of all the meat and flour and sugar and stuff out in the river and let it go down the river. And they know the people who wouldn't have nothing to live on, but they done that. And, and if you was cooking anything, eat in there for yourself. And if they, if they was hungry, they'd go and eat it all up. They wouldn't even get nothing. They'd just come in and drink up all your milk and milk. And just do as you please. Slavers across the South were incredibly hesitant to change after the order, not only because they were losing the labor they paid for, they were losing an entire heritage. Not taking too well to the new proclamation by President Lincoln, the slavers actively withheld the life-changing information from their slaves, sometimes to the point that slaves would end up working on the plantations for up to six more months. You know, and old Marshall didn't tell you, no, know, it was free. He didn't tell you that? No, he didn't tell they wait till I think now they said it waked them six months out of that. Six months. Without guidance, though, many. <laughs> many of the slaves found their newfound freedom less glamorous than they had thought. With not a dollar to their names, very few possessions, and little to no education, they found themselves alone. Sadly, millions of newly released slaves, unable to make a living, ended up becoming emaciated, even dying as a result of starvation. And if we got free, we didn't know nothing to do. And my mother, she then she hunted places and bound us out for a dollar a month. And we didn't have no property, we didn't have no home. We had nowhere, nothing, we didn't have nothing on it, just to, like the cattle, we just turned out and uh, get along the best you could. Colored people are free, they ought to be awful thankful. And some of them are sorry they are free now. Some of them now would rather be slaves. Although freedom had been granted, they realized that it came with a heavy price tag. Even though slavery meant hard work and beatings, it also meant having food and shelter. 
Mama them didn't know where to go. You see, after Freedom broke, just turned, just like you turned something out, you know. Didn't know where to go. That is where they stayed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't know where to go. Turn us out just like, you know, you turn out cattle. <laughs> I say, didn't know where to go. The slave's freedom was met with mixed emotions. Fountain Hughes was asked about how he felt about his freedom and whether or not he would rather have been a slave again. His answer was haunting. You know what I'd rather do? If I thought, had any idea, that I'd ever be a slave again, I'd take a gun and just end it all right away. Because you're nothing but a dog. This period was one of the darkest times in the history of the United States. But even though slavery was eventually abolished in the States, it is quite a different case worldwide. From forced labor to human zoos, or areas of the world where visitors would travel simply to gawk at the local indigenous wow, people. Whatever its way. form though, the voices of the slaves matter, bringing to light the sad truth that slavery is not dead today. It's just the difference between racism now is not the same as it was back then. Well, they can't make us slaves, but yeah. racism... It still exists for some people who doesn't uh, like too many African Americans or any other color yeah. that's not their color. Yeah. Nothing against nobody, but you know, some people are like that, some people are not. Alright. It just, it just, you know, it was different back then. When they was free, they didn't know what to do. Just like y'all saw, we did our baby. We put him down, he's free, he don't know what to do. <laughs> he don't know what to do, we freed him. And like I he mean, playing with his toys. Even though we making a joke out of it, it was actually the same. I mean, when they was free as slaves, they didn't know, they didn't, they, they was raised as slaves. It's almost like they lost their only one thing to know that what they had to do. All right, and some of them probably was slaves since they were born, so they definitely didn't know what to do. <clears throat> and but, but, I guess when they realized, like the older gentleman, uh, when he realized that if he had to be a slave again, he was going to kill himself. Because he knew exactly, even though he ain't had nothing to do, he didn't know. He didn't know what to do. He still rather not been a slave again because he know what could have happened. But guys, y'all make sure y'all check this video out in the description below. Comment below. Hold on. Excuse for all the screaming. Uh, hopefully, y'all still enjoy. Uh, yeah, this is just a very emotional video. Yeah, very emotional. And the kids are learning something new, especially her. Eating her peanuts. Peanuts. But guys, make sure you check it out in the description below, comment below. And also, make sure you guys subscribe to CJ and Rena. And also, check out the children's channel at CJ and Rena Family. Like always, guys. Peace. Bye.